So what do we need to look for if we're performing absolute value transformations? Um, thing number one, do we have a stretch or a shrink? So if the absolute value of A is greater than 1, we have a stretch. And then if A is in between 0 and 1, we have a shrink. Apply that first. Second, do we have a reflection? If A is a positive number, no reflection. If A is a negative number, yes, we reflect across the x-axis. And then third, Do we have any shifts we have to look at? So you can tell if you have a vertical shift based on what we have for H and what we have for K. H will tell you if you need to have um, a, a vertical shift or how far you shift. And then K will tell you any horizontal shifts or up and down. All right, so let's try an example. For the next equation, we have Y equals 2 thirds times absolute value of um, X plus 4 minus 6. So one thing to note, when we're looking at the general form, this y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k, hk is going to be our vertex. So when you create your table, look for the h value, look for the k value. Okay, so because here we have x plus 4, remember when we subtract a negative, that's really like adding. So our vertex is going to be at negative 4, negative 6. And then just kind of a trick, because we have to multiply the absolute value of x plus 4 by 2 thirds, count up by 3s for the x, or down by 3s. So negative 7 and negative 10 are two values I'm going to try. I'm also going to count up by 3, so negative 1. And then 2, and then substitute the values in, and then see what you get. So for example, I'll do a couple of these. We already know that if we substitute negative 4 in place of x, it's going to equal negative 6, because that's the vertex. Let's try negative 7. So 2 thirds times the absolute value of negative 7 plus 4 minus 6. We should get 2 thirds times the absolute value of negative 3 minus 6, which just becomes 3. And then 2 thirds times 3 equals 2. So we should be getting a value of negative 4. And then because it's an absolute value function, it will be symmetric about the vertex. So if we substitute negative 1 in, that will also be negative 4. So let's try another one. So 2 thirds times absolute value of negative 10 plus 4 minus 6. Negative 10 plus 4 is 6. X 
absolute value of negative 6 is 6. 2 thirds times 6 is 4. And then 4 minus 6, we get negative 2. And you can te uh, check, test it out, substitute 2 in place of x, but you should also, you should also be getting negative 2 as your answer. So next step, let's plot the points. 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 4, negative 4, negative 6, negative 7, negative 4, and then negative 10, negative 2. And then connect your points with that nice V shape. All right, next we're gonna look at just more generally what we can expect to see if we're applying transformations to graphs. So what's nice is if we're just multiplying on the entire function by a value, like we have the graph y equals f of x, and we are multiplying f of x um, by one half. So all you have to do, here are the x values, here's one half times f of x, and then here are our y values, or our new y values. So when x equals 0, y or f of x is 4, so we just have to take half of 4, and we should get 2. So we'll plot the point 0, 2. Do the same thing for the point 2, 2. So because the y value is 2, we just take half of 2, we should get 1. And then the last point, 6, 8. Notice how the x doesn't change at all. It's just the y that's changing. That's because all that we have to transform when it says um, y equals f of x, and then we just multiply f of x by a value, all that we have to transform is the y value. All right, another nice situation to have. Right now, we have y equals f of x minus one plus two. So this again relates to the horizontal and the vertical shifts. So I can see inside the, the f of x, we've transformed that to f of x minus one. So because we're subtracting one, that means we're gonna shift one unit to the right. And then because we're adding 2 at the end, we're going to have a vertical shift up, just like with the absolute value function. Um, and this is just, in general, any function. So we're going to shift to the left one, and then we're going to shift up 2. I will delete these coordinates so you can see what I'm writing. And then again, we're going to shift to the right one unit and then up to. And then to the right one unit from the point six, eight, and then up to, and then connect. All right, so one more example. Um, what happens when we have a bunch of different transformations combined? So just like what we talked about with absolute values, step one. Do we need to reflect? Yes, we need to reflect across the x-axis. So if you want to plot all the points out, you can. Your graph might get a little bit messy. So what I like to do is first look at, okay, I'm gonna have the same x value when I reflect, and all we're doing is taking half of the y value. So half of two is just one. So when we reflect across the, um, the x-axis, we're still at negative four, and then our new y coordinate is going to be 1. And then for the ordered pair to 6, we're still going to have our x value at the number 2, but then our new x coordinate would be negative 6, but we're taking half, so now it's negative 3. And then for 7, 4, 
Again, if we just reflect it, it would be 7, negative 4. But because we have to take half of that f of x value, this is going to be 7, negative 2. So that's step one. Second, we have to shift our graph because it says f of x plus 2. We need to shift to the left two units and then down one. So for all those points, you are going to shift left two, down one, left two, down one, left two, down one. And there you have it. Good luck and let us know if there's anything we can do to help you out.